So I felt like doing another one. Um, and I have a rough idea, but what I want to talk about is the the fact that because our entire structure has been absorbed by this game um, this is where and this is like this is the matrix it's just different it's not the exact matrix it's like and I think the interesting thing is to go well that was made 20 something years ago is this how long we've been on this trajectory for was this phenomenon existing then? If you think the Matrix was made just after the tech bubble, what happened after the tech bubble was the same as what's about to happen now, except that it's almost like the tech bubble was the, was the practice round. For what this inev inevitable bubble is going to be, and the bursting of that tech bubble <clears throat> was was the loss of uniformed faith that the world had within those tech companies. But at least then, the tech companies, it was conceptual. So it was conceptually, we lost faith in that idea in 2000. And so that burst. And then we... But then we went on and did it anyway. Um, and... It's funny because it's almost like it's that bubble bursting that destroyed competition within the marketplace. So the tech revolution would not have happened in the way it happened. It would not have been as fast moving if the competition of the pre-bursting of the tech bubble was maintained so if we didn't have do not it's it's it was the removal of competition that enabled the actual horror story that burst the bubble to actually be made into the world and to get its tentacles wrapped around every actual aspect and that that's i think that is a weird phenomenon to have happened it's almost like the fear of the potential disruptive interaction that this tech thing had is what burst the bubble. But that bursting of the bubble is what actually enabled those tech thing to, to decimate their competition, which would have slowed them down and made them stable. So it destroyed that competition aspect and then they were only then... So they weren't competing with entities in the same playing field they were only just swallowing up entities in the real world who had to compete with their new superpowers and who didn't understand it and that short term so that the, the basically the game was that the tech could just constantly sacrifice the the st stability of their entities by just speed and as long as they stayed ahead of that curve this is what microsoft was famous for doing he would just chew things up and just keep moving. And the momentum is what kept them appearing to be stable. But if they were in, if, if these tech companies, say, take your Amazon, take your Google, take your Meta, take, um, they're, the, they're, the, they're the, probably the big players, you make them had to have competed Competed in an environment where there was 20 entities all trying to compete in the same thing. That's what happens. So, so the tech bubble bursting, the tech crash of 2000, 
laid the landscape for these, you know, monolithic entities to just capture the entire world. It's where I think we need to get to. We need to break from the financial model to give authority on competition. And that 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 is adapted. Competition didn't, for them, so if we go back to the last thousand years of history, um, there were other avenues to, to compete for ideological or, or territorial assets. Um, it's just... No, we haven't we haven't hit that point yet and now they're coming into conflict with those structures that we are now going to have inevitable competition and it's where the reality of act- the actual world is going to come into direct conflict with these entities that have been able to become so powerful based purely on a technical advantage that only exists in that world and this is where you can see the, the battleground is they want, if our lives are completely lived in this technical space, then they have the advantage. And if they aren't, then they have an absolute disadvantage. And so I suppose that's where we're at. We're at the point where um, we, we, we're at the global finance and power point where where it's like the kid's like, I just got one more level, da, 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 and someone just comes and pulls the plug. That's where we're going to be at. I'm almost there, I'm almost there. Da, da, da. Like that's, that, that's existent in the, in the almost tantrum-like self-defense coming from these CEOs. Um, and then we have a bunch of... Uh, money sloshing around in their buckets of people that are just betting on on that but it, it's it's going to be clear um, I there is nothing in, in our constitution of this country that says I have to interact with it with an artificial casino that's been imposed on the world. Um, that would be crazy. And so we have to assume that that is an unwelcome intrusion into our lives on the basis that that was non-existent at the time of Federation. And that's in this country and that, that applies to, to all um, all countries in which our constitution is linked. The fact that they convinced everyone to play along with it and to, to implant their actual resources and back their actual property and things into that, into that casino, that's just human nature. But the ground, the firm ground, grounding of reality has to be maintained. And that's what I'm doing. And I won't... I won't move from that point. Um, Yeah, it's... Just the allure of that simplicity has just lured everyone into... into a... Stupid! The fact that it works, I, I've even noticed. I've, I've noticed the difference in interaction of money is so extreme between dealing with physical currency in my hand to digital currency. It, it doesn't. Um, I mean, it, here's the simple thing. This is where we can go to. Would we? Would we allow casinos? Because think about this. Really, really think about this. So think about time zone. 
Time Zone's like an arcade that, franchise that exists in Australia. And you used to go and... Um, I think you used to go and buy tokens. And then you would put the tokens in the game. Uh, and then they changed from tokens to a card that had credit on it. Now, think about a casino. A casino could technically do the same thing. That would save them a lot of money. Like a lot of, like, imagine you just have a tap thing where you're just like, it's $10 on the thing. But I don't think we'd allow that because it's like that ruins the game. It becomes too obvious. It's like the, the, the dance of the casino is you, you go and agree to play the game, you exchange your money for chips and then you play with physical chips and you are holding physical chips. I think the moment that that went digital, the whole thing would collapse. And I assume that considering it would save a lot of money, um, that it has been trialed and has had bad results. So why if, why if that is non-existent in a casino atmosphere where there is already a perceived knowledge that you are on in a in a position that you know what I mean everyone knows when they enter a casino that the house always wins so why if that technology has not been incorporated into a casino is it then incorporated into our our actual lives which was always the the point like that was not perceived as a casino but now that has gone that way quicker than the casino has so the casino has a more grounding in reality than our lives do now why is that? Because the casino knows if it makes that move that people will reject it. Whereas this system has just snuck it in the back door. Inconvenience. And so there's no... Like, I don't see myself entering that. And it's frustrating because I want to have some type of... Like, certain things like Spotify. I would like to have premium Spotify. Or like Netflix or something like that. But that's about it. That's the only like. So there, like for me, it would make more sense to like. I'll have a card. I don't want all my shit in that card though. I don't want every interaction financially to be in that fictitious world. I would, I would rather just load that up at some point with a credit, have a prepaid nature. So this is like this is my digital spending money, and the rest is is held physically. And I think that's where we need to, where we need to get to. Um, <clears throat> and even if I'm a minority, it's like you have to provide for that because that was what the country was built on. I'm not going to, I'm rejecting your digital currency, so I'm not going to pay taxes with it. I'm going to pay taxes with physical money. If I lose, I lose, I mean, purely just by its very thing. It's like that physical money is what the country is built on. There isn't enough physical money to go and, if say everyone when tomorrow went, I'm going to pay my taxes in physical money, there isn't enough physical money to even make those obligations actually in existence. So you can see how it's like that we've lost, that we've lost the thing. And when it's not even backed on anything. Um, and there just has to be a point where this, where the balance, where the books are balanced. Because I'm in a position where it's like I'm, I'm dealing with, if every dollar is now has a, has a potential of a factor of 10 um, leverage. And I'm starting in a game where, you know, there's an entire huge generation of people that have that have purely just benefited from that transition. I can't compete down any line. If if your hard currency is has that leverage potential, then it means you've devalued my day to day earnings by a factor of ten. Because the entire economy is built on leverage. That's the greatest trick ever pulled. That no one 
fucking kicked up a stink. No one kicked over the bucket and said, oh, don't do that. If you make the entire financial world revolve on, on leverage, you've deleveraged my every dollar I have, every dollar I earn. That's how the inflation was hidden. Because that wasn't how the economies were built. The people, say boomers, they didn't get there by that. They benefited from that. So underneath them. So if they were already entered into a 30-year mortgage on a property and they could have that, and then the world went more and more leveraged, every time, every next dimension, every next factor, so it was like factor two, factor three, factor four, that's where the, where the average level of leverage is with every dollar. Every time that happened, their assets, which they paid for, became worth more and their repayments became less. They just rode a tide of inflation and now they're left with assets and they're actively leveraging those assets into to the new thing directly into systems that are deleveraging every hour of my input of my output. And then you can see why it's like, why am I almost basically disabled at 36 or 37? It's because I had to pick up the fucking weight of your fucking incompetence. I had to ride this fucking bullshit level of shit. I was optimistic. I tried to do it. And I saw the fucking game for what it is and I've rejected the game. And that's the only way. Unfortunately, now you're in a position where it's like, that's going to be, it's going to be everywhere. It's impossible now. It's, it's becoming just crazy. Like we've got our kids driving. It's it just, there is no, yeah. There's no structure. It's just holding on purely with hopes and dreams. And the... I mean, they called it the depression when this happened before. It's like, this is going to be, you can't even call this a depression. This is going to be the utter fucking catastrophe when this all settles. I mean, if you basically get, say, an average well-off boomer who might be leveraged out the fucking ass on however many investment properties, as soon as that vanishes, that it all just vanishes. I think there's something like, like we need that figure. We need like, what, what is the total capital sloshing around the world in comparison to the total assets? And whatever that number is, considering that all that capital is backed on those assets, even if there wasn't anything fishy going on, just that would be like, well, what, what is that? But it's all being carefully manipulated so that there are institutions ending up holding all the assets. But even their assets don't, even that, even the fact that they're doing that and that's incredibly dodgy and they're just filtering everything to them. It's like they're still going to default on their liabilities because... The, 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 the books are not able to be balanced. I just, I don't know. I don't know where, like, where, like what the fuck is going on? And I'm, I'm sitting here going like, I don't, I don't even fucking care about your fucking casino. I care about the fact that we're, we've like destroyed our land base fucking and it's the same with climate change so i don't fucking care about fucking climate change you know what i mean i'm kind of praying for climate change climate change in this region is the only especially if it goes one way if it goes the other way we're fucked if it goes one particular way is the only thing that will save us at this point if we don't start immediately fucking making action that has nothing to do with how hot it is it has purely to do with the fact that we've turned every square centimeter of soil into a desert And that is never spoken about. Not just a desert, a poisoned desert filled with fucking chemicals. It's the same with like, go to Mars. It's like, 
What the fuck are you talking? You're gonna burn up all those resources trying to get to a place that has an even worse problem than we have here that we can't even fix here. What the fuck are you talking about? And this is a fictitious universe. It's like, this is what I'm saying about the creation of the tech thing. It's like, that's its own universe. It has its own mythology. It has its own like pre-story and its own universe that is built. That's like all the Star Wars things have this universe. Lord of the Rings has this universe that it created. It's like the current world has these, these things where it's like climate change is allowed to be talked about. Desertification and destruction of, of soil and ecosystems is not allowed to be talked about because that's the real problem. So we're allowed to talk about going to space and colonizing Mars, but we can't talk about repairing the damage that our own colonization to these regions has caused. Now that's, that's certifiable insanity. That's by the book. This is, this is delusional, whatever. It's just the, that whole structure is delusional. And if you go into opposition with it, you sound delusional and then fucking, you know what I mean? If I no one, if I created some type of universe that I lived within, no one would have any problem with saying that I'm fucking crazy. That is, you go and talk to most of the people in the fucking thing, they probably have created some type of delusional universe. But this is what we're being forced to live in, is a, is a construction of delusion. <laughs> and it's pretty, like... This is actually a really common thing. You'll see, like a lot of companies on every scale from the small businesses all the way up to top corporations. Like there's a point where it's, it's almost basic human nature that there's a point where if stuff gets out of hand, people push it too far. People keep going. We don't have good, a good history of, of realizing there's a problem and taking action. There's a, there's a tendency to go all in. This is a gambler. Op, like does this an alcoholic does this this is this addictive kind of bingey thing it's like if you hit a point because I think we are like we've we've gotten through this world which is very dangerous by pe a lot of people consistently making that I'm going to try and kill this lion and a lot of you don't hear about the guys that got killed by the lion you own survivorship bias you only hear about the guy who oh, I'm going to fucking sacrifice my life and try and kill this lion and I did it and we don't balance that book properly. We don't go, oh, what about the 150 guys that tried it before and are dead? We just cheer on the victor, which is cool. But we've got that in, this is what these business operators and, and politicians and everyone is doing. They are consistently making that decision to be like the hero and to try and like, we can do this. Yes, we can. And it's like, but statistically that person is far more likely to be on a personal suicide mission and dragging whatever resources whatever employees or whatever citizens of this of their territory or state are underneath them that person is making a a hail mary in a lot of times like you say it's a 50 50 stab in the dark chance at doing something and that's we've got to become aware of that weakness with, with that tendency in, in humanity and we've got to start building resiliency about it um, because we're not because the decisions that are being made are far bigger than like the person doing that with a lion to save the village is cheered on because it's, the, it's their own the, the lion is still going to be there threatening the village and so if you're making that individual choice to risk your life to take on a lion or a dragon or or another army then that has always been celebrated because the threat's still going to be there if you if the lion eats you the threat's still there so if you kill it there is a no oh, what's the word there is a benefit the benefit far outweighs the exponential benefit or something like that there's, there's a better term that i'm lost on um, it's the basis of good investing. It's you want, you want 
something of return on, uh, anyway if you know and you watch this put it in the comment section if you know what I was talking about but because the threat's there you can take that risk and it's the risk to come back as a hero because you're yeah the risk is still if you die you still got the risk so then someone is at some point going to have to face that risk whereas what's going on now is it's like say the tech CEO it's like they're in that same position, but they're creating the risk and doing the same thing. And a lot of times they're reacting to their own problems that they've created in the same way that you would if it was an external problem, but they're creating it. So it's like the psychopath is... You can imagine... The, oh, this is a weird metaphor that I'll go into to explain this. Imagine a, a captain of a ship that goes in, that goes crazy and he is he go homicidally starts killing people on the ship but then is in control of the ship you can imagine that fucking that would make a great horror movie where everyone's like he's leading the thing he's like we'll find whoever is doing this and bring them to justice but it's him and you can almost imagine the dissociation of him like going down that thing of like enjoying that both sides of that thing. I think this is a lot of time what sometimes when I watch, say, The Dark Knight, a great um, movie, Batman movie, the, the best, I oftentimes find myself in a position where I go, imagine, like there's a couple of ways, imagine the Joker is, is Batman. Imagine that. It's hard because they're different characters. You kind of, you can't go to that dimension. But say, say you just go to the story. It's like imagine or imagine they're brothers and they swap. But I think, I think thinking of them as the same person because I think all those narratives are based on that. And so you can get to a point where you can imagine the ship captain being the murderer and then trying to solve the thing is, it's, it happens in fiction a lot. But this is where we're... Because then you get to be both. And that is probably intoxicating for these individuals. They get, like, a lot of times they're pleased. They're like, well, we're trying to make these tools. It's like, yeah, but your thing's the fucking problem. You created the problem. Um, I run into this a lot of times with with women that have interfered in my life it's like they create the problem and then try and fix it and it's this it's this perpetual cycle that you can't escape from and i think if those people are operating from that you know dragon killer lion slayer um situation that is that is self-sacrificing it's like that then then we're we're lost because we have the people creating the problems also then risking the lives and the well-being and the security and the everything of thousands of years of stable structure playing some type of internal like power trip game where they're playing both sides of that thing in a in a suicidal way they don't mind if they've already made that leap into being so me personally i'm in that position where i'm i do feel like my life is on the line for this my entire lifelong reputation i've gone too far out onto a limb to not be exposed if this goes away that isn't in alignment with what i'm trying to do i will be forever affected by the decision to project this out now and this isn't going to disappear if this goes the whole way then they'll you know they bring me into something they're like that is where i know i'm at but i'm clearly not making that Scenario: I'm defending what I see to be a threat and I am doing it from that position where I think it could kill me because it's, it's the benefit. It's like, if this is a threat, then that, that's the equation I'm in. But what, what I'm competing with is people that are actually making the threat and then trying to fix it with the same suicidal or the same martyrous attitude. And that's, that's bad. Um, yeah anyway I'm going to stop there I really don't feel well I feel really ill um, 
this is gonna go through its process where it flares up, I basically get my throat is really sore and really hot. <clears throat> Whatever is. Um, I don't really see ways to exit this. It's, it's just kind of fucked. If, if my body is, is doing this, I know that that means I'm being, do, do you know what I mean? I'm being offed by the society. Um, I've seen this in plants and I'm, I try to maintain nutrition. Like I'm trying to have, I did use some of my money to buy like a, a vitamin thing to just try and keep up with it. But it's that nothing, um, nothing can protect you from this, uh, this type of thing. We are, we are social animals. Um, and me being cut off from that is killing me slowly. <laughs> um, and I can feel it. So yeah, that's, that's weird. It's weird to be observing that within yourself. Um, although it's, it's strong. It's like a, it's a strong thing. If, if I can get this message through, it's like that's existing on all levels. If we're being in, um, we, our, our minds can't handle this disconnect between reality and these social things being dished out willy nilly now that we're non unheard of. This ostracism strategy is, should be condemned at every level. And this is existing now, like because you've opened the door to it, it's not just existing where I'm doing it, it's existing down every line, in ev down every new, new existing ideology that is having the power of this <clears throat> delusional system propping it up. And you're using, cause you, because you're disconnected from the history and you've just benefited from this surge of technology, you don't have the, the built up discipline and knowledge required to, to wield the power that you are holding. And so you have gone, you are now repeating and re invoking s um, strategies that have been dead for hundreds of years because we evolved out of them because we'd already done the work on seeing how destructive they are. Um, so yeah, I look for, I mean, I look forward to the actual responsible people in structures reestablishing the order that we spent hundreds of years getting to. Um, I do see little glimmers of it, which I think is the only thing keeping me alive. But this needs to be st started taken seriously. Otherwise, we'll just evolve. And if the th I think the thing is for me personally, if we do evolve, this is a lot of energy I'm spending doing this because I still have hope. If I lose hope, that energy will stop going here and it will go into being in whatever I need to become to be in that environment. And I'll do that with the same intensity and the same vigor that I'm doing this in, but I haven't quite lost faith in those structures yet. Um, and I, that's my gamble. My gamble is I have faith that there are structures out there that know better what is going on. They are starting to realize the phenomenon that's happened and they are hopefully more than likely um, strategizing on how to bring this ship back to port. Um, yeah, okay, thank you.